Hey everybody, Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bandalore, a Let's Play tutorial series. Here's a little recap of the scenario details voted by you at the start of the series. Picking up where we left off, we have been... Well, we just recruited a brand new companion. Uh, this companion has been given the name Silas. Uh, Silas is going to be a very capable companion once equipped properly. So speaking of equipment, let's go ahead and uh, set her up. So she is a very capable rider. Right now she has the, uh, the horse that we won from the tournament. Um, but what I need to do is to set her up with a shield... So let's just do a very basic leather-bound kite shield and throwing weapons. She specializes in throwing weapons. Uh, I'm not going to spend big bucks on high-tier throwing weapons. Uh, hopefully we get those in due time. And then maybe for once I'll actually buy a little bit of armor just because uh, the armor that she has on right now is pretty dreadful. Uh, but first thing I want to do is make sure that... Uh, Let's give you this this uh, nice scale armor and some gloves. Uh, and maybe a little green hood. There we go. You are very well set up, very costly. Uh, another thing I wanted to do is to make sure that for my own stewardship, uh, I am supplying my troops with a um, variety of food, which is also very costly, but that's okay. It'll increase our morale and all that. All right, so next step, heading around to try to find things to build our renown. So at this present moment, I have enough clan tier to be able to be a vassal or a mercenary for another faction. Now, I want to build up my reputation with the Volandians, but I don't want to become a vassal, and here's why. If I become a vassal, when I want to form my own kingdom, leaving... Uh, leaving their kingdom as a vassal will upset them. So it's it's far more in my advantage to just be a sellsword where I can leave the service of a sellsword and not upset the faction at all. So that's the plan. But the trouble with this is, if you're curious, um, at present, the Volandians aren't actually at war with anyone. And they're not going to be looking to hire mercenaries if they aren't currently at war. So I need to wait until... Oh, really? Well, I didn't need to basically wait until some other kingdom declares war on the Volandians for me to be able to become a sellsword. Let's go practice our uh, lancing. Oh, never mind. Right over their heads. And Silas. Alright, so Talon and I versus two Valandian troops. And then if we win, we move on to the final round. champion I'm up against is pretty well armored, but no chance of winning a 2v1 at the end of that. Alright, Talon and I in a Bill Hook fight. And the horse is ours. Now this horse that I won is probably too high level for any of us to ride. As you can see, riding level 60. Uh, so no one but Silas is able to, and Silas already has the a better horse, as you can see here. Um, so yes, the Valandian Courser there is going to go unridden for now. I'll lock it in. Uh, so what we're looking to do is, yeah, to basically just 
wait around for the Valandians to be either declare war in another kingdom or have war declared on them. Um, so in the meantime, it's going to be ideal for me to build up my Everyone engage! build up my renown, uh, build up some skills, level up my companions, get ourselves a little bit better gear, so that when it comes time to answer the call of war, uh, we're actually ready. We have the, the means and the skills to sufficiently defeat enemy armies. The average enemy, you know, the average kingdom enemy vassal army size is going to be somewhere in the 60 to 80 range or so. So if we're not able to take on 80 troops at once, we're only going to be ever captured and not all that useful to a, uh, a potential, uh, you know, in, in, in war. And I don't really want to be just continually defeated. That doesn't sound fun at all, so. Hence the need for better equipment and higher level troops. Now, speaking of high level troops, uh, one of the strategies is to wait for an entire stack of troops to gain experience in order to level them up. So let me explain that concept a little bit because it doesn't really make sense. It's just the way the game works. Uh, so the way this works is all of the troops in a certain tier. So let's take the recruits, for instance. Any experience that any one of these recruits gets adds to the pool of all of the Valandian recruits, which means that if I upgrade um, these recruits up to be Lubby Crossbowmen or Footmen, they're no longer contributing to the experience pool of the recruits. So what you want to do, if, if you are going to be in a large attack where you think it's possible that you sh will lose, you should upgrade all your troops immediately. Um, because you want the best possible troops going into combat. But if you're just grinding out experience like I am, it's more ideal to just wait for all 13 of these Valandian recruits to, recruits to have an upgrade available, because any kills and any experience that they gain add to the pool. So let's number them 1 through 13. If you know, number six gets a kill, it's experience for all 13 of them shared. So the more that you have, the faster they will level, which means the fact that I have Valandian only troops actually really benefits me because they all share the same XP pool uh, of the same tier. So that's, so a kill that a recruit gets doesn't help a swordsman or a sergeant. It only helps other recruits. Um, but it's a really effective way to level them up quickly and then additionally, uh, who's got a... Oh, I have a... What skill do I unlock? Oh, someone else, not me. Someone else unlocked something. Ah, uh, here we are. Bash got level 25 riding. There we are. Perfect. Um, yeah, so one of the other benefits that I have here is I've got the stewardship skill of, um, or no, sorry, the leadership skill of Raise the Meek, which means the lower level troops that I have, the tiers 1, 2, and 3, level up even faster, which is fantastic. Oh, there's a tournament fight here, but I'm at 62% health. I'll enter it anyway. Unlikely to win, but uh, I'll still compete. Uh, that was first round. I'm with some Lassen Stranger, and a bunch of my other companions are in this as well. Now, a mounted uh, fight is actually, I find, pretty easy. You just have to make sure that the opponents don't build up enough momentum to get a couched attack. But the AI here much prefers couched attacks over normal ones. Uh, but couch attacks are very hard to charge up, so it's actually not that It makes these rounds a little bit easier, I think. Essentially, this arena is too small for the proper couch attacks to work.
but uh, the AI wants to couch attack. Because it's devastating when it does work. So as a result, the AI make for very bad uh, lancers in the arena. Specifically in the arena. Oh, it's just me and Unthuri and last end. So I'll try for couched ending here, just because I do have a teammate and there's not much threat. And there we go. So last end and I, toe to toe, in a bill fight. Oh, that's not good. Missing uh, a significant amount of my own health. Make sure not to get hit, but I swung faster and truer. And then me versus Unthuri, again in another, oh, it's too bad it wasn't a lance fight. Because as you can see, his athletics, he's running really fast. And he's... Yeah, he beat me. Yeah, one of the advantages of having really high athletics is you can close the distance. So you can back off to dodge an attack and then lo move forward uh, very, very rapidly. And Unthuri had particularly high athletic skill, and I was missing a fair portion of my own hit point pool. So between those two factors, um, you know, if I was more skilled, sure, I could have won. Or a little bit more patient or tried to block and counter. But that's fine. So it's, just a, it's just an arena fight. Everyone! And at the end of the day, um, really any arena fight experience is worth it, as long as I have the money to enter the next one. So these are bushwhackers. They are um, bow bandits and forest bandits. So it's going to be best for me to close the distance and try to prevent prevent them from using their bows as much as I can. Their loot pool is a little bit better than that of the looters. Um, but they're a little bit more dangerous as well. They're also worth more uh, for ransom. So now my health is even lower. Uh, Tavern District, ransom them off. There is no arena fight here, which is probably good, because I'm not really sure I'd be able to enter it. Uh, the weapons we got off those guys, uh, just some splinter arrows. Nothing too fancy. Uh, let me lock in the courser here. It is a warhorse, so it will allow uh, troops to be upgraded to warhorse status if they need it for the upgrade. It's always good to have a spare warhorse or two for unit upgrades. And we'll just continue um, seeking out opportunities to build our renown. Like helping villages. So you want your daughter found, sure. I've done one of these already. Uh, but essentially you have to track down the man's daughter. If I check my journal here. Um, Aragon the Black, and there's a bounty, so let's go ask around in a nearby town to see, oh, actually I already have location, let's search the village, there they are, they're behind me. Rafar the Widowmaker. It's not a concerning name. All right, so now, trying to convince her. The first thing I'll do is try the charming approach. And then the next thing I will try is the, maybe the, hmm, leadership? Nope, it was ineffective. 
How about... Oof, there's a very small chance this will work, but uh, calculating. Nope, also ineffective. Then how about mercy? Nope. I ran out of choices. I think this is the first time this has happened to me. So what ends up happening here is we're in a duel. See, I uh, fumbled around with my weapons there. So now, this is not the ideal, charming solution of talking her out of it. I have to duel a man to death. And for that, I am a heartless bastard. Um, but, you know, I made a alderman a promise. So, Torvald is happy. I get paid. Uh, and there's also a family feud here. Sure, let's uh, talk to this leader for Family Feud. Okay, so this quest is talk to Hallgard and then go to Larnak, Ethenbold of Larnak. Okay, so let's ride over to Hallgard. Hopefully we can be a little bit more charming this time. Last time it didn't work. The more that you level up your skills, the more likely they are to be successful. I have pretty high charm, but I don't have a lot of other stats uh, for that specific conversation. Okay, so I've told him that I will escort him to seek out the blood feud, or to end the blood feud. And then next we are headed to... Should be highlighted. But we are headed to Lar Larnak. Why am I not see Oh, yeah, it's over right over here. Plain as day right in front of me. So we'll head over to Larnak and. I'm gonna take a walk through the lands first. I actually don't see the man. Oh, Hallgard is right next to him. Standing at the ready. I told Can to gather my companions and then come find me. So Can is riding off to Talon, Richard, Silas, and Bash uh, to gather the forces. Just in case this goes south. I, um, I'm already pretty wounded. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to have my blade at the ready. But now that Talon's here, I'm actually going to trust the diplomatic process with blade drawn. Okay, so I'm going to try to talk him out of it. And nope. <laughs> may have selected the wrong conversation. All right, you end the blood feud here. You get the killing blood. Okay, no, nope, I'm not going to let you slash him up. Um, what are these two doing? Oh, they're just cowering. Right, here's Richard the Stag. Not entirely sure why this hasn't triggered as successful. Because I don't really see that there's any. None of the enemies are uh, left alive. Let's try talking to him again. Because apparently he's not dead. Alright. So now I'm telling him he's breaking the law. I'm going to go with the charming approach here, and then another charming approach. I've charmed this man out of his uh, blood, uh, family feud. 
I'm glad that uh, somehow killing him didn't actually matter. Uh, all right, so that family feud is over and buried. It's good. And we'll just continue to search out opportunities for quests and the like. Unless, uh, unless of course, Valandia goes to war. And then we'll, we'll try to become a sellsword. Becoming a sellsword is pretty straightforward. I would just have to talk to truly any noble. Um, and in talking to the noble, I could say, hey, you know, I, I kind of want to be a sellsword. Take over, come on! They would allow it. In this fight, I'm just gonna mostly allow my um, my troops to do the heavy lifting. Try to get them nice and leveled. At this point, um, I can't really, I don't have any holdings. I don't have any passive income where I make money. Um, so I want my guys to gain as much experience as they can get so that if I do become a sellsword, I can uh, upgrade them and give them experience and all that immediately. But I'm not really ready to be paying for like a thousand a day army or anything like that. Another thing that might be useful is to put my own companions. I have to do this every time because they don't, they keep resetting. But basically put my own companions on their own order list. Um, so that I can send my companions in first, um, which allows them first crack at the experience. All right, let's go to Ox. Wait till day daylight. Check out the arena. It's a tournament. I have 85% health. Should be enough. A very goofy plated helmet. Whoa. Good hit. Poor horse, but good hit. Kind of brutal. They weren't facing me, so cut them down. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. I sort of wish that your um, companions wouldn't enter the fight against you. It kind of seems. A might bit counterproductive that your own clan members would compete against you. But, uh, oh, here we are. Me versus Bash. I made it. Relatively painless. And, yes, a bill fight. I never like the ending bill fights. Valandian sergeants aren't particularly high tier. And this one, oh. Uh-oh. Very not good. <laughs> I don't like those bill fights. I don't like those bill fights at all. I felt like my second swing was accurate, but clearly it was not. I wasn't close enough. Um, one of the ways to remedy that, of course, as I did mention, is to try to get my athletics up so that I can close the distance more quickly. That would definitely make me more effective in the arena. And also in castle sieges. Alright, so I've just sent my companions out first, all five of them to ride, and because they're functionally immortal, um, they're also, you know, really effective shock troops because they don't, Frontmen! they don't die. Soldiers! Sergeant, you're on command! So I gave the companions a head start. I do have some other mounted cavalry. Uh, I have two others. And they're now riding up with the rest of the army. Oof. 
think I just shot my own. Whoa! That troop just hit me with a, uh, a throwing spear, and that hurt a lot. Javelin in my uh, in my chest. Experience, more of my recruits ready to get leveled up. And we're just heading up north. Now, if you're wondering about how to tell if kingdoms are at war, if you hit N or go to your encyclopedia and go to kingdoms, I can click Valandia and see that they're only currently at war with a minor faction, the Brotherhood of the Woods and not actually with uh, any major faction. And as a result, they're not gonna be looking to um, bring in any cell swords. And I, I pretty much just have to wait. Uh, associates captured by bounty hunters. Well, you're a gang leader, so kind of serves you, right? No arena fight here. Another thing I could be doing is recruiting a bunch of um, I'm just going to only recruit recruits. Recruiting a bunch of recruits to widen my recruit pool. So when it comes time to... Oh, really? You jumped me? Um, when it comes time to... Attack... Soldiers! Follow your soldier! As a mercenary, I have a large amount of recruits that immediately can become footmen or crossbowmen. That way, as recruits, they don't... Um, they're not taxing. They're not expensive to upkeep. But then as soon as I need tier 2 troops, I can bring them all up to tier 2. The only problem with that is because if I have a larger force, um, the battles that I have will be worth less renown. They're, the renown is also scaled to how outnumbered you are. Um, so of course, if I'm roaming around with a group of 10 versus roaming around with a group of 100, the when my 10 take on a large group of looters, it's sort of a, a good battle tale, right? If my group of 100 beat down some looters, it's like, oh yeah, okay. Like, the giant army wins again. Big whoop. Um, so there is that bit of a penalty. Oof. Seeing all those squires. So I might not, uh, I might not go up to uh, a full roster. One of the... Okay, so this squire can go up. The reason why I uh, increased the squire, for instance, is he was the only one left in his own recruit pool. So he was effect, es essentially maximum experience. There was no reason not to increase him unless I wanted to save a few um, a, a few uh, dinars. Okay, so we're at about 50. I would say 60 or so is probably bit of a golden number uh there's certainly a lot of um oh you're a tier two there's certainly a lot of uh looters around to grind out that experience yes run to the coast good strategy and as much as i want to get my hands dirty the more that i can let my own party do the better so in this Infantry! Soldiers, take in this instance of an attack oh! I'm sending my infantry in first so that they can get the brunt of the experience while having everyone else follow me. Look at those throwing knives. So silly. So if you look at the kill feed, a whole lot of recruits uh, managed to get kills on this group, which means probably a whole bunch of these recruits are going to be able to be leveled up. Which is 
exactly what I entered this fight for. Where are they? Oh wow, they really ran. He must have ran and started to flee real early. Oh wow, okay. That was a nice shot. Lucky. And there's one or two over here. Yeah, because uh, morale is a factor, and because we out greatly outnumber them, um, they decided, of course, to retreat a lot sooner. Oh, and there they go disappearing. They decided to retreat a lot sooner um, than normal. So we got uh, we got more recruits to be able to be leveled up there. As you can see, there's 12 of them now jumping up. No quests given. My bow has hit, so I can either ready my aim 10% faster, or hold my aim 15% longer. I'm definitely going to go with faster aim. I find that um, increasing the amount of arrows that I can fire is probably more useful than uh, being able to hold them. I don't tend to hold my aim very long. Sorry, Mr. Litters. Infantry! Sergeants, take charge! On this one, I'm just going to hang back and let my recruits do the combat. Arrows! Hold your position! Archers! Sergeants in charge! Now, if I auto-resolve, the auto-resolve is fully based upon tactics and not actually rendered combat. So, because I rendered the combat here, as you can see, a whole bunch of my recruits leveled up, as did a footman. Um, but if I did tactics, I could actually have some losses. So I usually find that even though it's not time efficient, it's usually um, more... You keep your, your guys alive longer if you actually enter the combat and watch, unless your tactic skill is ridiculously high. And if you check the tactic skill tree here, uh, let me do that. Um, yeah, so cavalry caused 10% more morale loss. And then your soldiers deal 5% more in simulations. Simulation is when you, like, sort of auto-resolve a fight. Um, and so on and so forth. Tactics is a very useful skill for your companions that lead their own parties to have. Because uh, all of the companions' fights will be simulated unless you join them. So if you are commanding an army and you summon your companions to join you in combat, um, that allows your companions to have non um, tactic fights, but if we take a look at our um, companions here, I believe uh, uh, so Silas here has really high tactics, Would she would make a very good uh, commander and then Can actually doesn't have good tactics, but have good stewardship, so she would be able to have a large army uh, Who has the skill point? Uh, yeah, here, Bash Oh, I thought I gave you that, I guess I didn't hit done So if I hit send troops instead of attack, that would be a tactic simulated fight. So I'm telling my companions and my troops to go for it. Talon got knocked out. The 
again, companions never really die. They can get captured, but they never really die. And here we are, another XP boosting combat. Now, almost every single one of my recruits can jump to um, tier 2. I'm just not doing it because of the cost. Because I, uh, I don't have enough money to support a large army. I am right now subsisting upon the spoils of beating down, basically, poor, uh, poor troops. It's not, not good. Not good money. Okay, so these tattered foot wraps probably going to be better than, yep, there we are, upgrade. And these numbers here are the total leg armor, not specifically the armor of the um, of the boots. So, for instance, I have 20 leg armor, 15 of it is from the boots, and 5 of it is from the tunic. So, it can be a little deceptive. So, right now, um, you know, it looks like I have 17 leg armor, but it's not all from the boots, only 11 it is. And these new boots bring it up to a total of 22. Uh, leg armor is particularly useful for people on horseback because most of the, uh, not most, but a fair portion of the melee that they get hit with uh, will be to the legs. Okay, that helps fund our army a little bit longer. Now I haven't really been taking quests from, um, uh, from gang leaders in cities as we're supposed to be chaotic good. Um, and working for gang leaders doesn't really sound like a good thing to do. But I'm still seeking out those arena fights. Really any other opportunity to make some money and renown. Oh, here's an arena fight. And this time, unlike many of the other arena fights, I'm actually at full life, so I don't have a good excuse as to why I lost. So let's try not to lose. Right over his head. Richard the Stag jousting us. Bash sort of stomping on me. That's enough out of you, Bash. Oh, Stag gained a level. Sorry, Richard. Let's see if I can't land any long range ones. Oh, ouch. Got you from downtown. Alright, this is full gear. Oh, I hit the, I think the horse passed in front. So, of course, the further I, I land my shots from, the more experience they're worth. So, not that I'm supposed to be leveling up my crossbow, but there is some sort of benefit building up my skill from down here. And there we go. That round is over. Now it's a four-man free-for-all, or women in my case. Throwing caution to the wind because I saw an opportunity for a couched attack. We land one from behind. Oh, we land another one, and can I land a third? I can. And I do. They're dangerous, but they're fun when they work. Of course, that was not much of a uh and then i'm at the bill axes which i very much hate as a last round but hey it worked out this time got a good block in and then reversed it on that Valandian knight i won't hate those 
those will be a little bit easier for me to do when I have better armor. And with the better armor, there's a little bit more forgiveness. So this Plated Helm sucks, and I'll sell it at the next town I'm at. It looks like it would be nice, but it's it just looks fancy. It's not actually any good. Uh, Valandia. Still not at war with anyone? Then good for you. I would appreciate it if you uh, went to war with, I don't know, let's say one of the empires. But hey, you know, you don't need to listen to me. Grainfish oak grapes are a little low. Uh, wine. Cheese. There we are. And there's another arena fight. Ooh. It's me versus a bunch of my own companions. Now, if you really wanted to min-max it, uh, what you could do is every time you go into an arena fight, you could um, strip your companions so that they're a lot easier to, to kill in the arena. Totally cheesy, if you ask me, and not fair at all. But you do control what your companions wear. So, I mean, all's fair and if you believe that all's fair in love and war and you don't want the challenge, go for it. So it's Bash, Can, and I. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, I probably won't be doing any more couch attacks because I damn near died in that last one. And I think no matter how I fare in this fight, uh, I'd be moving on because I'm one of the last two. But I still want to win. Uh-oh, there it goes. Yep, but I still I still move on as I was one of the last two remaining. All right, can rematch. Where are you going? You are dead. Uh oh. Well, again, one of the last two, so a little forgiveness there. And this time, I actually have sword and board. Yeah, the Valandians, because of their desire to use a lot of pull arms. And my clear lack of skill, ouch, with pull arms. Yeah, so here is a perfect example of the fact that his athletics is let, letting him land a lot more hits than I can because he can back up to a disengagement uh, distance much more quickly than I can. And then, of course, his hits land on my shields a lot harder than mine do on his. Which means, in a second here, I'm going to lose my shield. Uh, but I struggle bust my way into a victory there. And here we go. Me versus Amalgam. Now, of course, if you can dodge an attack rather than block it, that's probably even better. Oh, I punched him out for the win. What was even the prize? I wasn't even paying attention. It was... Uh, another really terrible helmet. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and sell that. That's a pretty clear, obvious thing to do. And... I guess I could ask for the first time ever... I could uh, ask this um, arena tournament master. Uh, he's going to describe how the games work. Um, tell me how they work. Are there any tournaments nearby? So Charis and Marna. Um So if you're ever wondering where you could go for a tournament fight, you can always ask the tournament masters. And they'll tell you. So, Maranath is up there, and Charis is down here. Let's just go to Charis, and that will be the last thing I do for this episode. Now, if you look down here, my leadership 
is going up. Um, I think at this point what I'm going to do is for my companions, let's go to the clan here. Uh, the roles that these guys have, I'm going to say none. So that I'm building up my own skills. It will make it so that I have a far smaller army because I am not drafting off of the stewardship of my own companions, but I want to be able to build this skill up myself. Um, and I also don't want to have a an army larger than what I would normally be able to um, control. Oh, that's real bad. gonna hope to dodge this and close the distance. Now all these other nobles that I find myself fighting in the arena, they tend to have very high athletic skill, which means they're very quick on their feet. But hey, I was... Because this is a torn prize I'd actually want to win. I do need chest armor for my uh, companions. He's only a tier 3 unit, so that should be easier. In fact, he'll die from the punch. And then me versus Bash. Oh, sorry, Bash. But hey, at least I don't have to use a, uh, a polearm with no shield. And you know, I think I'm going to give Bash the armor from the winnings. Um because he made it that far, and obviously it's a big improvement for him. All right, so I've got this layered leather tunic. Is this better for anyone else? It's better for Can. And now I think everybody has, yeah, everybody has at least decent armor. Well guys, that's about all the time I have for this episode. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me about this episode or about this series in general, drop me a line. Uh, it should be probably, realistically, a few more before I'm able to create my own kingdom. Uh, but hopefully, with any luck, we can become a sellsword. Now, if Valandians don't declare war on anyone, I might become a sellsword for someone else as long as they're not fighting Valandia. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all next episode. Adios.